Well, I think China, obviously, because I think that's the story which is going to sort of shape how the U.S. markets do and how the global economy does over the next few months. That's because what's happening in China is just uh, so sort of intriguing um, at two levels. One, that the economy is slowing down quite sharply. And I think that when they came back from the long week uh, off, they saw the sort of weakened information on retail sales, what happened in Macau gaming, those kind of sort of pointers, and they figured out that the economy is really slowing a lot, and therefore you got an easing step which took place on the weekend. But the biggest story is the fact that the scope to ease is quite limited, that even though they ease on the weekend, for the first time in recent history, the interest rate gap between U.S. and China has disappeared. So you basically have similar interest rates between these two countries. And that's the question that many people are going to ask, even within China, that would you rather hold U.S. paper or Chinese paper at the same interest rate? Wait, so back that up. Let me think that through a little bit because I'm kind of still processing that. If you're getting the same interest rate, then you have to start thinking about the risk, the risk that comes exactly. with it. Yeah. Exactly. And I think that that's what we also saw like on the weekend. We saw some data showing that capital outflows from China have begun to accelerate. So they have very strict capital right. controls. Right. But as we know in these emerging markets, that the locals know how to get their money out if they really want to get their money out. And I think that's the real fear now, that will they be able to defend the exchange rate at level of seven if they want to ease as well? Because the path seems pretty clear, which is that the U.S. wants to keep in, um, increasing interest rates and China needs to decrease interest rates right. or at least ease monetary policy. But can I just go back to then the issue in the article that, that Joe raised, which is in terms of the trade war or battle that we're even cold war, as, as, as Kevin Warsh referred to it last week, is the fellow who wrote this piece right, which is to say that their economy is in such terrible shape that they can't fight what's yeah. happening in the U.S., that they, they're in no position to fight what's happening in the U.S.? Yeah, I mean, to say terrible shape as yet, I don't know. But yes, I think that there's no doubt that so far, if you look at the financial market reaction, they're telling you as to who's in a stronger position to, to fight this battle. Because now in the end is that, will this be a zero-sum game or will there be some winner out of this? I think that's the broader question. And my uh, like point is that this year has been a story really of how well America has done in terms of the uh, thing which really strikes me is one of American exceptionalism. We may or may not believe in it, but the financial markets have never believed in it to such an extent. Because if you look at the gap between the U.S. and the rest of the world, has never been this wide. So undoubtedly, the U.S. economy is doing extremely well just now. The U.S. financial markets are very richly valued, reflecting that performance.